Thank you, uh, Mbak Udari. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Apriwan. Uh, uh, I'm a PhD student, as Mbak Udari mentioned, PhD students uh, in science and education also in anthropology and sociology. Uh, Andre is my uh, supervisor. Another one is Mark Bison from Project Science. And thank you for the organizer giving me a chance to present my research here. Yeah. All right, uh, my topic is about the Indonesia climate policy. I think it has out uh, reducing emission from deforestation and forest degradation. So this reset focus on the uh, domestic and international challenges in terms of the implementation in Indonesia. Uh, this is the scope of my presentation today. Uh, I'll start from the background of that study. We can have a framework. These are problem questions that and discuss here and discuss uh, several key findings and significance of the findings in the uh, right. uh, Initially, the, the, this research is a situation in the context that in Indonesia, one of the biggest rainforest countries in, in, in the world uh, after Brazil and Costa Rica. Uh, almost 60% of uh, its land area, uh, part of the forested area. And because of the huge rainforest uh, area, Indonesia has a long story of deforestation and forest degradation, even since the colonial uh, period, according to some studies. And because of this, Indonesia is the third largest emitter uh, from the forestry sector, according to, according to the World Bank data in 2015. And the annual emission from forestry and peatlands uh, is almost 50% from the total emission, uh, such as uh, from total emission from uh, various sectors, such as from industrial sector, household, and so on. And one of particular Issue is regarding the forest governance, uh, not only uh, based on the forest works uh, uh, institute uh, in 2011, but also many studies also mentioned about the issue of forest governance. And in 2005, uh, the idea of RED plus as part of uh, a theme under the UNFCCC, the United, the United Nations Framework Convention for Climate Change. Uh, Indonesia also participate uh, to adopt and implement this scheme. In simply way, RADD plus uh, this kind of a compensation that giving to uh, developing countries who has uh, which have uh, a rainforest countries like Indonesia. And if those countries can manage can reduce the emission from the uh, from uh, deforestation and forest degradation, we will get a uh, result best payment in the end. And so far, Indonesia already got uh, uh, the result best payment from uh, uh, the uh, global climate funds under the UNFCCC project and, and also from the Norway government in 2020. However, uh, despite this progress, there are still many, uh, what is it, critics toward the forest governance in Indonesia that, that the, the current forest governance is still far from the expectation, both from the domestic and also from the international level. So, uh, the problem statement for this research is despite the progress of the RED plus implementation in Indonesia, the current forest governance has not been able to address the deforestation in Indonesia effectively. Since there are, there are still many issues when in your conflict, uh, the relation between the national level and sub national level. Also, uh, uh, what is overlapping in terms of uh, policies related to the uh, forest management sector in Indonesia. So, this, uh, this problem still uh, exists uh, in Norway in Indonesia. Then, the purpose of study, uh, because the idea of RED plus not, uh, not immersed as the domestic policy, but comes from uh, the idea of international agenda under the UNFC. So I try to elaborate the nexus between international, international and domestic drivers of the RED plus implementation in Indonesia. And the second one is to better understand the factors of international policy transfer 
di konteks kaum dia ini. This is my research question. Uh, I have one my research my one main research question. How does the government of Indonesia manage in mitigating in international challenges in adopting uh, international climate change mitigation action? I have some some subsidiary research questions. Yeah, I think I will skip uh, in the uh, during this uh, subsidiary research question. I will move uh, in addition to this end. Uh, I employ a qualitative approach, uh, particularly a test based research approach that refers to the systematic process of collecting data and linking social facts in one or more cases to address the problem of pollution. Here, in terms of uh, data collection, I conducted uh, a literature study uh, both online and offline sources uh, uh, from the related uh, institutions such as at the global level I uh, got the data from the, the UN FCC of course uh, this, I mean this program of the UN FCC the World Bank uh, the Norway government uh, that has uh, what is it uh, participated within the implementation of RE plus in Indonesia and also, uh, I conducted a uh, semi structured interview uh, together and question data from uh, the Indonesian government official, both national and sub national level, uh, legislator, also both from national and sub national, scholars, business sectors, NGO, and also several international agencies uh, at best in Indonesia in implementing uh, red pass uh, in Indonesia. And the location of the research. I, I did uh, field work in Jakarta uh, and also three subnational uh, level. Uh, I choose three provinces here. Uh, this is uh, East Kalimantan in Borneo Islands and also Jambi province in Sumatra Island and East Java in Java Islands. I've been in Indonesia for doing the work about uh, six months. However, I think six months not enough to cover a complex system why I really plus implementation. Right. Uh, literature review framework. Uh, in terms of literature review, uh, it's interesting uh, because uh, in the idea of a reading class has been launched since 2005. So it's almost, so it's already more than 10 years. And when I tried to uh, look at the Google scholars, the keyword RADD plus, it's available above more than 10,000 publications from various disciplines and various background uh, and many of these issues. And when I try to put the Red Plus and Indonesia above 2,000 publications from various background, so it means uh, many, many uh, scholars have, have interesting and have interest in the issue of Plus and uh, deforestation issue. However, I try to uh, what is it, uh, compare several uh, uh, several studies here. Uh, there are they, 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 they put the, the issue of institutional process such as from uh, and McGregor, and also the issue of the actor of leadership, legitimacy, and local discourses that from Rojas, Gregorio, and Maria, uh, Glover, and Scroder. Then also these of power relations uh, in terms of the implementation, the implementation process of the RDD request. Uh, not to mention about bureaucratic politics and also the political economy contingency in regard to the uh, RDD plus implementation. Then, because I employ the framework of policy transfer, I also try to find uh, uh, how would be the, this framework uh, uh, analysis work on the uh, reference studies in Indonesia, but so far I haven't found yet uh, about the, 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 the using of this, this framework. But however, there are several uh, case studies regarding the Indonesian case, such as uh, Yulia and Rita, uh, they explain, uh, they focus on the precondition of policy transfer in the, in the case of uh, for the transfer for the water as leverage and 100 percent cities programs in the urban context of Sumana in Indonesia. Then also from the Chaksono, uh, 2018, 
uh, he assessed the academic administrative entrepreneurial uh, policy in the context of uh, tertiary education policy in Indonesia. And the, the, the last one, uh, this is a comparative studies uh, in the context of policy, policy transfer uh, between uh, IT and Indonesia in the context of disaster uh, management. Like uh, what is it, uh, compared to recovery disaster agency agency in Indonesia and IT. With the IT, yeah, they have lead, they have written a reconstruction agency and the interim IT recovery commission. So, uh, as I mentioned, so I employ uh, a framework of policy transfer within this study. Policy transfer refers to the a set of processes on how policy knowledge, administrative arrangement, institution, and ideas in one governmental system at one time and place is used in another system of politics and government. Uh, initially, the, 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 the policy transfer studies uh, developed mostly in the global countries, so mostly in the uh, global north countries, such as in European countries, us because of uh, the idea of uh, globalization and also the dissemination of global policy, such as the climate change. Uh, policy transfer has become more complex and intense and has occurred in many forms and contexts, both in the developed and developing countries. So this way, uh, it's uh, a potential framework to explain the, the context of RPGD implementation in Indonesia. Then the object of transfer covers some aspects such as policies, institutions, ideologies, media, even negative reasons. There are various approach actually within the policy transfer framework itself. Uh, like, like, like uh, evident best approach, uh, idea, uh, additional best approach, but I choose the multi level analysis approach because I try uh, to link the nexus between the international and domestic model. So, at global level, I will focus on the idea of global governance as a community structure. Uh, it's also uh, work, sorry, this from, at this level, also. Uh, use the structuration uh, theory, as uh, a structuration framework uh, rooted uh, on the hidden uh, uh, framework, uh, how structure and agency relations. Here, um, I think it's different with the, 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 the framework uh, within the sociology, sociological uh, perspective. Uh, the, the agency here uh, refers to the, the historical of uh, refers to the uh, state actors, so not individual uh, actor as uh, hidden perspective. I, I follow the, the structuration uh, developed by, uh, by Alexander Wentz and uh, Diane Stone in, in international relations. And then I also uh, add historical analysis, uh, morphogenetic cycle, uh, because uh, in, in, I, I, I do agree with the, the Sorry, uh, Archer Margaret Archer, that the, the structuration in the context of how the transfer here is not totally appropriate at the time uh, policy emerged, but also uh, related to the uh, historical uh, trajectory of policy itself. So, this is why I try to rethink really how the RD plus idea actually come from uh, the previous. Uh, structure and agency relations uh, at the global level. Then at the state level, uh, it focuses on the uh, it focuses on the change as a potential structure. Mostly, uh, the policy tra policy transfer analysis uh, explains how change, such as the political transformation, give uh, or provides and opportunity structure for uh, policy transfer of pure uh, in the country. And then uh, I also add the historical institutionalism here, uh, try to, uh, sorry, uh, press how uh, the institution of uh, forest uh, and, and also climate change institution in Indonesia uh, interplay uh, 
between these two institutes, between uh, sorry, between foreign institution and climate change institution. And the second one at organizational level uh, focuses on network and opportunity structure here. Due to the 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 uh, RDD plus uh, comes through the global sorry comes through uh, multi multilateral partnership and also bilateral partnership such as uh, uh, the UN Red Plus. This this uh, this multilateral partnership brings the idea uh, RDD plus to be implemented in Indonesia and also through the bilateral uh, partnership such as between the Norway government and Indonesia government. I also uh, start from the 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 the, the, the condition of state capacity, uh, uh, bureaucratic, fiscal, and so on in terms of uh, related to the uh, implementation in Indonesia. Right. Yeah, uh, before, before I jump to the, uh, the key findings and the statement of the key findings, um, I want to give a sort of briefing about the RADD Plus. Uh, as I mentioned, this is a scheme under the UNFCCC. Uh, there are four criteria uh, within the RADD Plus that, that has uh, to fulfill, uh, uh, that has to follow by the, the Developing countries want to implement, uh, which want to implement, uh, implement uh, this red plus into their domestic policy. There is uh, there is national strategy or action plan, national forest monitoring system, separate separate information system, forest reparation reference emission level or forest reparation level. Related to the context of policy transfer. Uh, the prominent feature of transfer will be uh, located on the national strategy. Well, the three others, uh, national forest monitoring system, software information system, foreign reference uh, emission level, the three uh, mostly kind of uh, in, uh, technical instrument that have to be adopted. Well, for the national strategy or action plan, this, uh, uh, this, this criteria contains how the developing countries has to adjust their foreign, uh, foreign governments, has to adjust law, policy, and so on, even institution, uh, in regard to get the, the, the result best payment uh, from the RADD plus. Well, there are three phases that developing countries have to uh, pass uh, in terms of the red plus implementation. The first pass, uh, and, and they have to, uh, what is it, create the national pass strategy, including the policy and measures, capacity building, and so on. Uh, national forest monitoring system also, and methodological for M MRV, uh, measuring, uh, reporting, and verification of uh, its emission level. Then, uh, phase two, red pass implementation, did this regarding the demonstration activities to test methodology, action plan, mainstreaming, red bus, capacity building, and technological transfer. Then the last phase is result of actions. This is operationalization of the uh, function of the NFF, uh, and then reporting uh, of mitigation performance, market and non-market funding of the uh, mitigation performance. And Indonesia uh, is already at this, uh, at the third phase, because Indonesia already got uh, the result best payment from the uh, Global Climate Fund under the UN, the UN and so from uh, the Norway government uh, last year in 2020. Then uh, this criteria, Indonesia uh, based on the, uh, the uh, bilateral partnership with the Norway government and also with the uh, World Bank uh, Indonesia then uh, formulated its national strategy uh, like this. Uh, there are five pillars. Uh, the first one is about the institution and process. Uh, how the Indonesian government creates 
uh, during the past uh, the climate change uh, institution to implement and to implement the plus in Indonesia uh, since 2007 Indonesia already started from the task force and in 2015 uh, in 2014 Indonesia already had a uh, red plus national agency that's not a red plus agency I mean uh, but in 2006 in 2015 after uh, the community took presidency he was disbanded this uh, uh, red plus agency then uh, the, the affairs or the business of red plus activities uh, moved to the Ministry of uh, Forestry and Ministry of Environment and Forestry. Uh, then in terms of law, since 2011, Indonesia already uh, what is it, uh, create a policy to uh, create a policy that's so called uh, forest moratorium. Uh, stop giving uh, uh, license for forest concession. Also in, in 2018, there's also uh, palm oil, palm, uh, sorry, palm oil moratorium uh, to support this, this agenda. And, and also uh, in terms of uh, acknowledging the, the, the rights of indigenous people, uh, the, the, the High Court already uh, uh, produced uh, a decision uh, call, uh, sorry, Mahkamah, call High Constitution number 35 in 2012. Uh, this, this decision acknowledges that the uh, indigenous, indigenous people also has rights to uh, explore, uh, to do activity within the forest. So th because the, the, the RPDD class also mandate how to address uh, the rights of the indigenous people. However, uh, based on the interview uh, with uh, several uh, uh, participants from the from uh, representing the indigenous people in Indonesia from Aman Alliance uh, Masyarakat Adat Nusantara or the Alliance of uh, what is it? the Alliance of uh, Customary uh, Actually, or something like that. Sorry, uh, most of them uh, not really. Uh, optimist with the willingness of the government because so far there is no uh, effort uh, to implement uh, how this uh, high constitution number 35 will be uh, what is it uh, acknowledged uh, in practical level uh, I mean at the ground level uh, because still there is a debate uh, let's say in the context of mapping the forest area which one belongs to the uh, customary forest on which one belongs to the uh, that forest uh, within the area. Then, uh, in terms of strategic programs, uh, there are several programs uh, that Indonesia already initiated, such as uh, one map policy. One map policy actually uh, the effort to uh, to address the issue of overlapping using of the map because one agency will have different map with the other agency. So it's it's funny somehow. But it's happened. Uh, even sorry, also between the national and subnational, between the company, a company uh, with the, the, the with the respect agency also have different uh, maps. So the way the issue of uh, sorry the, the idea of one map policy initiative one of uh, what is it one of if for uh, to address the issue of Forest management in Indonesia. However, uh, actually, this idea already started since the SBY presidency. But lastly, uh, when I met some some participants, not only in Jakarta, also but uh, at the 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 the, the subnational level, they don't think that the the what is it the, the actions of one could be implemented as any from the other parties uh, in Indonesia. Um, and also uh, regarding the peatland management, Indonesia also uh, uh, what is it, uh, created one uh, institution uh, to manage and to arrange, uh, rearrange uh, peatland restoration in Indonesia. Uh, however, this the, the, the idea of 
it and restoration will be ended in 2018 if I'm not mistaken but uh, Joko Widodo still what is it uh, keep going uh, this program in terms of development and also there is uh, land reform uh, we call it Torah uh, Tana uh, object reformasi agrarian this is part of uh, agrarian reform in Indonesia giving a certificate for local people uh, to what is it uh, to have rights to to explore the land including forest uh, so no need to be worried uh, if what is it if they have a problem to explore that, that area however many uh, however from some participants uh, it seems that this just lip service from the government as uh, the, the effort to answer when they did the campaign during the election they, they will give or guarantee for, for giving certificate uh, to, to some uh, sorry, for some local people in Indonesia. Joko Widodo uh, stated that above, uh, two, sorry, above 2,000 certificate will be given uh, to the local uh, people national rights in Indonesia. And another one is a social forestry program. Uh, this is also one strategic uh, program regarding to the RDG Plus. Uh, social forestry give what is it give uh, an opportunity for the uh, community not only for the indigenous people but also for the uh, community who living uh, around the forest area to do such activities uh, like like agriculture and, and so on. Then uh, culture and freedom uh, it's mostly uh, in regard uh, to the mainstreaming uh, effort to mainstreaming the, the issue of climate change, uh, the issue of deforestation and, and, and how to address the issue of deforestation and forest degradation, uh, such as they, they have what is it, uh, they call uh, equal corner. So every month they will have uh, a workshop with uh, what is it uh, invited many participants from a various background. Uh, at the national level, and also they have uh, what they call uh, uh, climate, sorry, uh, climate village. So they will choose several uh, villages to be part of uh, to promote the agenda of climate change. And the last one, stakeholder uh, involvement. Uh, it is related to the to the safeguard uh, uh, information system as part of. Uh, Red criteria that I mentioned before. Uh, here, uh, they tried, uh, I mean, they, 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 when I interviewed uh, one prominent uh, person at the Ministry of Forestry, they stated that, uh, she stated that um, the, the, the High Constitution number 35 that, that I mentioned is actually uh, an effort to acknowledge. Uh, the, the right of the indigenous people. However, as I mentioned, that uh, it's still debatable in terms of uh, practical level. Not so far, there's no which one forest uh, area belongs to the customary forest or which one belongs to the uh, uh, state forest, still not clear yet. Yeah, then I, I want to move to the uh, several findings. And I'll start from uh, the global level. Uh, when I uh, address that, uh, the, 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 the idea of RDD Plus is not really something new, actually. Uh, many effort from the international uh, operation has, uh, has had been, had been uh, conducted, uh, including in Indonesia, uh, such as uh, tropical uh, tropical forest action plans uh, initiated uh, in 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 1980s, if I'm not mistaken, in 1965. Uh, but uh, this this idea not really worked well. Uh, many critics come to the tropical forest action plans because uh, rather than make a better forest management in tropical forest. Actually, it's it's make it made uh, the, the the management of forest more worse, uh, worse uh, 
So this way, uh, the, the many, 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 uh, many, uh, many critics come to the tropical forest action plans, and and it assumes a one of the uh, failure effort to address the issue of tropical forest such as in the And in the context of uh, international cooperation within the uh, forest governance, mostly there is. Uh, there has been dichotomy between global north and global south uh, perspective. Uh, the, the, the debates always within those two perspectives. Uh, from the global north, they require they require that the developing countries, which have uh, rainforest, has had to be uh, responsible to manage to address uh, these of deforestation. Uh, while uh, the, 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 the global south will 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 uh, will uh, state that they, they, they are still on way of uh, economic growth. So so what is it? The, the, the difference always between uh, those two uh, perspectives. But interestingly, in the context of climate governance, uh, a big difference. Uh, like Indonesia, Indonesia. Uh, Indonesia position uh, a bit flexible. Usually, Indonesia will join with the uh, group of seven seven plus China uh, to address. I mean, to negotiate uh, what the best uh, way to address the issue of uh, uh, tropical forest loss uh, in Indonesia. But because of uh, sorry, uh, but because of Indonesia, one of the emerging economy, so Indonesia has interest that they have to put uh, the priority uh, Indonesia should put the economic growth as the priority rather than uh, the idea to manage the 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 the, the forestry the forestry sorry the forestry sector through the RAD plus and initially uh, in the beginning sorry in the beginning of the idea RAD plus Indonesia not really Indonesia was not really enthusiastic with this idea uh, until 2013. Indonesia then finally uh, submitted uh, uh, its proposal uh, to, to, sorry, to to adopt the RDD plus uh, in, in in this country. Uh, then, uh, yeah. Then also there is a debate, a debate about the uh, idea of uh, red plus with the premise of the neoliberal. Uh, here, uh, many many critics comes to uh, the idea of RND plus because this uh, the RND plus tends to what is it to uh, adopt uh, the premise of neoliberal in which uh, put the uh, economic value of uh, forest conservation. So the, the notion of uh, RAD plus uh, what is it emphasizes on the the the, the role of uh, uh, sorry the role of uh, international agency on on conservation rather than the role of the state itself. So this this debate until now still keep uh, uh, happening in, in in terms of uh, RAD plus negotiation. Negotiation, negotiation, and the next one is about the leakage issues. Leakage means GRDD plus as a part of uh, a scheme under the UN, the UN FG policy. Seems when when there is a red plus program in one country or in one area, it will the, the, the exploitation will be moved to another area. So instead of uh, reducing the emissions. This is just what is it, the way to relocate the activities. It's not really happening. This is, this is another issue that's quite uh, underrated, still debatable. And also uh, about the voluntary versus market mechanism. Uh, Indonesia, one of the countries uh, that, that wants uh, to, it, to to find that there are any plus supposed to be in the scheme of voluntary approach. However, many developed countries try uh, to bring 
in the, the market mechanism approach. Uh, it means if 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 there are any past part of the market mechanisms, there is no more funding uh, to finance the, the implementation of RNA plus. And also things like uh, this will be a, the, will be giving a credit to the developed countries. So so many critics again will will will, will address that the, the works or, or the perspective, the, the neoliberal perspective real access within the RNA plus. Because it's all about the money, or, or it's all about the strategy. What is it to 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 to, uh, to make the, the 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 economic value from the uh, conservation uh, approach? And the, the another point is about the uh, flexible mechanism. Uh, many councils within the division of. Uh, Conference of the party, we call it COP under the UNFCCC. They always mention uh, flexibility, adjusting the the actual uh, actual context of the developing countries. So, in this way, uh, I mean, in this respect, when there is a slow progress that that many uh, parties address to the Indonesian Red Plus, uh, it's it's not really uh, something uh, what is some, something something new, uh, because. Again, this is not uh, uh, give a binding power from the UN Secretary, for example, uh, to, to demand that Indonesia has to do uh, things like this, thing like this. But again, giving to the Indonesia, uh, flexibility to Indonesia. However, uh, there is um, uh, a, a, what is it? There is a, a chance uh, the, the, the intervention from Multilateral and bilateral partnership, such as uh, through the letter of intent uh, or agreement, which agreements between Indonesia and the Norway government, uh, that Indonesia has to follow uh, certain uh, precondition. Uh, so Indonesia, if Indonesia wants to get uh, one billion dollar from the Norway government, Indonesia have, has to follow uh, has, has to follow. Uh, um, requirements uh, to, to get the development aim. Then it is in the context of uh, national and subnational level. Uh, in terms of policies, uh, yeah, Indonesia has created several policies to, to support uh, the RAD plus implementation, such as a moratorium that I mentioned before. And, uh, uh, in the context of uh, uh, acknowledging the, the rights of indigenous people through the uh, constitutional uh, court, number 55, 2012, uh, created, uh, sorry, created, uh, sorry, created a, a restoration of uh, land management uh, and, and many other uh, programs. But since the there is overlapping between one party to another party. Like the basic idea of uh, RAD plus uh, emphasize on the decentralization of forest management in Indonesia. While in 2014, uh, Indonesia, even under this under the the Joko Widodo presidency, uh, he initiated uh, the new regional autonomy law. Uh, which uh, what is it? Which limited, not limited, which arrest the, the, the participation from the subnational level uh, in forest management, uh, in forest, uh, in forestry sector management in Indonesia. Before the regional autonomy law uh, number uh, 32, 2004, uh, the the subnational level like the provincial and also the regency level, they have. They can participate to manage to give a, a permit and so on, but because of the issue of corruption and deforestation also getting increased, so this is the the, the the reason for the national government to retain the, the centralization of forest management again after this you know in 2014, and also uh, the, car, the the current. Uh, uh, policy uh, 
it falls uh, on man on law. Uh, it's also get uh, pro and cons uh, related to the already of past implementation because through this law, uh, it allows it seems allows that the the investment or the investor has the right to do uh, such activities, exploration or ex even exploitation of the forest area. So on the way, a bit controversial and overlapping between one policy to another policy. And the second one in terms of the institutional process. Uh, actually, the issue of lack of coordination is not really new in Indonesia. I think many research on a policy in Indonesia, they will find this sort of lack of coordination. So, so it's not really something new. However, uh, in, 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 in my research, uh, I found that it's not solely uh, in terms of uh, lack of coordination, but also competition among that agency, especially among that agency. Uh, here, there is a competition between uh, the Ministry of Forestry. Uh, uh, now uh, becomes the Ministry of Environment and of Forestry with the, uh, the Ministry of Develop Development Planning or uh, the National Agency of Development Planning. Uh, we call it BAPENAS. This, this competition is, is, uh, is confused at the, 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 the sub-national level. Uh, for example, they, they have different methods in assess uh, the emission level. Bapenas uh, relies on the economic thoughts, while the, 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 the Ministry of Forestry, uh, they, they relies on the uh, environmental approach. So, and this way, uh, when I, I did interview with uh, the uh, staff national agencies uh, like in Jambi and, and East Kalimantan, uh, for the beginning, they a bit confused. Because which 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 methods that they have to follow? Then then, then I ask, then what method did you choose? Then yeah, in the end, in uh, in terms of report, we just use one method. Then what what happened then? And they said that, that yeah, that's no problem. We just in fact uh, finally we choose the method from uh, the Ministry of Forestry. Plus, somehow it will be uh, what is it? It will be. It build a problem to some extent when when I also uh, interfered with the uh, prominent person uh, in the Bapenas, uh, I mean National Agency of Development Planning. He directly uh, stated that uh, the, the Ministry of Forestry dominated all the things regarding uh, climate change policy, including RDG Plus in Indonesia. Uh, however. Uh, he, he argues that the idea of climate change is supposed to be linked first with the idea of a national development plan, uh, which is under coordination of uh, what is it, uh, uh, the, the BAPNAS. So, so, so it's not really what is it? Um, it's not really uh, something uh, may ask shocks that the, 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 the competitions among. Uh, this step against this will uh, happen in the context of red plus implementation in Indonesia. Then, also about the, the national and subnational relations, as I mentioned, about the, especially in the context of the new regional autonomy law, it's really, really a problem. Uh, when it comes to the, the Jambi and also Moran, five minutes ago. Uh, uh, when I come, uh, I, when I come to Jambi and East Kalimantan, even in East Java, mm. they don't think that the climate change or RDD plus part of uh, their business anymore because what is not our domain? It is belongs to the central governments. So if you ask about the budget, about the policy, it's not really uh, part of uh, their activities. However, uh, in Kalimantan. In, I mean, in East Kalimantan, they have a bit advanced progress on uh, climate change, uh, especially in terms of RDD plus implementation, because East Kalimantan has, uh, uh, what is it, the, 
the local agency for climate change Dewan Daerah Perubahan Iklim. Uh, uh, what is it? Established since 2010, if I'm not mistaken. And why this this institution can exist in East Kalimantan while well, the other they don't have? Again, this is interesting because they support by the multi multilateral and also bilateral agency. Now, partnership, uh, such as in in uh, in East Kalimantan, uh, in, in East Kalimantan uh, uh, local agency of climate change supported in terms of financial from the uh, GGI Green Growth Green Growth uh, sorry Green Growth Compact something like that, and also from PNC. So not because of the capacity of the local government, but because of the supporting of the international agency. So this way they can survive until right now. Then, uh, in terms of public participants, uh, I will make a uh, short. Uh, this is regarding to the uh, uh, involvement of uh, many parties or stakeholders. Uh, however, when, when I met the local uh, indigenous people, I mean local representative of indigenous people, like Aman uh, in East Kalimantan and also Aman in Jambi, they don't think that the, the, the government or the, the request uh, uh, scheme in, what is it, uh, involves them within the process. They, they feel that this is just a legitimacy for them to make get the, the, the what is it, to get the, the result of best payment in the end. So, on, on the way, they don't feel uh, but it is really involved within the process. And however, at the national level, there's still activity from, from the, the Amin National. Uh, of course, uh, supposed to, uh, what is it, acknowledge some terms of conditions, such as uh, how the government seriously implements the uh, Constitutional Court number 35, which acknowledges the rights of the Indian people. Then the last one is about the global structural forces and competitive interests of uh, national and subnational level. You know, I think uh, I will move to the, the, the significance of finding. Here, yeah, uh, the significance of finding facilitated more understanding why uh, the progress of climate governance in Asia, particularly in the context of the academic class, is far from being implemented and effectively, effectively as many said, competitive. Oh. And in terms of contribute to the body of literature, to close the knowledge gap about the nexus between international and domestic driver, the dimensions, and the studies on the class in Indonesia, uh, they mostly focus on the uh, natural, sorry, uh, only at the domestic level. There is no uh, studies, there is no study here uh, uh, which try to link uh, this uh, level international and domestic. Right. Then other profits, the development of policy grammar studies, playing the context of the policy grammar studies. Then profits, uh, policy makers, I'm not sure about the last point. <laughs> Provide policy makers on free respect to tech and the pitfalls of the implementation. This is a compulsory for me because I got this project from the government, so I have to give a contribution <laughs> to the government. And there is some of the limitations that I felt. Of uh, course, about the time of the world, because it's a huge issue, complex issue. Now, within six months, doing the world, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't think that uh, it's really, uh, what is it, uh, will be, what is it, it's not really enough. Uh, six months uh, doing the world. Then also, uh, lack of, because limited of time, I also uh, lack of participants. I can't uh, interview one or two uh, key participants, participants. I met them, but cannot do, uh, cannot do, couldn't do uh, interview with them, uh, only short, uh, short, uh, short with them. Then also, uh, in terms of transfer, and I mentioned, the, 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 the com there's a complex object of transfer, so because it, uh, I get lack of detail somehow. Uh, yeah, this is a part of the limitation. And the last one is maybe it is about the limited uh, in the because I employ the quantitative 
So well, this is complex. I think it's better to use mixed method like qualitative and quantitative to enrich the data and and and, and knowledge. Now that's my presentation today. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.